Hello, my name is Cindy Madalucci, and you're watching The Pulse, where we get the 411 and all the latest and greatest things to do in this amazing city, San Diego. From the newest bars and restaurants to the chicest boutiques, to the gyms and the trainers that are getting the people of this city buff 365 days a year, to the place you want to go to get your spa on, I'm exploring it all for you. And of course, having fun along the way. So come with me while we put our finger on the pulse of San Diego. Today's episode was brought to you by Windis Fernandez Brinkward from Trilogy Financial Services. For all your financial needs, Windis and her team have got you covered. On today's episode, we start our show in studio with San Diego International Film Festival, getting the scoop on everything you need to know about this year's event. Next, we sit down for an exclusive interview with Michael Herkes, the Glam Witch, to discuss his latest book, Glamstrology, and how to discover your signature style with astrology. Every year, we love to sit down with Tanya Mantooth, CEO and Artistic Director from the San Diego International Film Festival, to talk about the fabulous event that they host every year. This year's event is October 16th to the 20th, and we show you how to get your pass. Watch this. I'm so excited about my next guest. I have Tanya Mantooth, the CEO and Artistic Tr Director of the San Diego International Film Festival. How are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm so excited, we're always excited when you come in studio because we love to get the scoop on the festival. But I wanna say congratulations because it's been 23 years. I can't believe that, that the yep. festival has been around. And I know when you started, um, I think it was 13 yeah, years ago. 13. Did you ever think that it would have this kind of longevity? Well, you know what? Every year we're looking to grow and expand. And and when we took it over, it was much smaller, much more of a localized film festival. So to be able to take it on international level, to be able to add that designation and to be able to have the kind of films and filmmakers, you know what? That just is a testament to the work of my team. And you guys take it up a notch every year, which we love. So let's talk about the festival. What can people expect this year? Well, we're going to open a Museum of Photographic Arts in Balboa Park, which is a fabulous theater. And we always have a pre-party and a post-party, so there's always a lot of fun there. And then on Thursday, we're bringing back the Night of the Stars tribute. Yay! So, and that's going to be at the Conrad uh, downtown La Jolla. And then Thursday through Sunday, we're going to do screenings. And, and all of that's going to take place at AMC 14 at Westfield at UTC. And this year, we're taking over the entire theater. So we're the only people in there. We're taking over the whole patio area. That'll be our festival lounge. We'll have music, we'll have cocktails, and, and you go see films and it'll be all day event. So that's Thursday through Sunday. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be amazing. And there's 102 films. Yes. That's a lot. There's panels, there's parties. It's so exciting. So let's talk about the slate this year because yes. this is really exciting. I know you guys just recently announced the slate. Yes. So. What, 3,500 3, submissions? I think you guys had a record-breaking yes. number this year? From 85 countries. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was, it was astounding. So let's talk about some of the films. So opening night. Conclave. <laughs> Ralph Fiennes, Stanley Tucci, John Lithgow, and Isabella Rossellini. It is a phenomenal film. It is, it is meticulously filmed. It is riveting and it is, it is quietly suspenseful because the story is, is a Pope dies unexpectedly and this is what happens behind the conclave when they're voting on the next Pope, which everybody's always been curious about what that process is. And you get to see the behind the scenes and the things that unfold and the twists in the film. I didn't see them coming. That sounds amazing. And then I'm excited about a few films. I know Jazzy with Lily Gladstone. Yes. I'm excited about that one. That was best performance in a US narrative feature. Yes. And then I'm also excited about Night Bitch. Can I say that? <laughs> <laughs> I was watching the previews for this. This looks amazing, right? With Amy Adams. Amy Adams, she won a big award up at Toronto Film Festival. This is such a different, this is such a departure for her. And it is funny and it is a, it's based on a book and it's a really interesting look at, you know, when women give up their careers to be stay at home moms, what they think the reality is gonna be and the reality of it is so different and how it kind of shifts you to some primal instincts and yes, night bitch. And every time I, uh, email my rep and I put that in the subject line, I'm like, mm, don't say that very often. 
I know that looks so good. And then we have to talk about the Friday centerpiece screening, right? Because this is new. Yes. Yeah, we just announced that we have the film September 5th. And this film is really extraordinary. So September 5th, 1972. Most people be like, don't really, doesn't have meaning. Munich Olympics in 72. Yes. And this is when the Israeli uh, athletes were taken hostage. Wow. But the amazing thing about this, Cindy, is the story is what happens in the newsroom because you have these sports journalists who are now battling the network because the network wants to come in because they're sports journalists. And now it's the battle behind the scenes, which is really an incredible story because they're also telling a live global story of what's happening. And you also reminded how how kind of antiquated the communications is. So how do they know they're getting the right story? Right. And so they have this moral dilemma. There's of, no live checking. There's no live checking. <laughs> is it better to be right or better to be first? And that's the moral dilemma that they deal with. And that is an interesting topic, especially given the politics of today and the media and how fast things go to air. Oh my gosh, such a hot topic. And then Peter Sarsgaard is in this one too, yes. right? So yes. this is gonna be amazing. Well, and let's talk about the closing night film, because I know everyone's excited about this one. Amelia Perez. This is an incredible film. This It premiered in Venice, and for the very first time, the Best Actress Award went to two of the actresses in it, Salima Gomez, Zoe Saldan. It is really an amazing film because it is, it is a drama, it is a comedy, it is a crime thriller, it's a musical and it's LGBTQ and it's in Spanish directed by a French director. Oh my gosh. So it's a lot <gasps> to unpack, but it is really an incredible story of this drug boss, cartel boss who decides he wants to transition. Okay. And so it is, it is really a remarkable story because it's a musical. That is crazy. It's like, how do you pick all these? I just, I don't even know how you guys do it every year. <laughs> And it's always such great films. Oh, thank you. So I want to talk about your partnerships because I know that you align yourselves with a lot of great partners. Can we talk about some of them? Yes. So I think one of them that I wanted to talk to you about was The Last Chance to Save a Life, right? The yes. Therapeutics iPath film. So this is a partnership with UCSD iPath. Okay. And one of the things that's really been important to me is to really highlight what's going on in the biotech and bioscience industry in San Diego. I mean, we know about it here because we live here, but I don't think we even really and fully understand the groundbreaking research that's happening. And so, and also a festival allows you to kind of tell that story through film that you wouldn't always know. Okay. So this is about What's interesting is you look at antibiotics and now how superbugs are becoming anti-resistant. And that's what the story is about, is about a race against time to do an alternate method because antibiotics aren't working. And here's a, Cindy, here's a st statistic that just stopped me in my tracks. And that is in the next 10 to 20 years, more people will die from superbugs than cancer, heart attacks, and car accidents altogether. This is, yes, it's a local story, but it's a global issue. And this is something people do not know about. Wow, this is crazy. And that's what's so great about the partnerships and the films that you have is it's bringing this conversation out there. Right, Which exactly. is so, this is, this is such a hot topic. Well, and I wanna talk about the San Diego Fire Rescue Foundation too, because that's another one that you have a partnership with. Yes, that's in conjunction with the world premiere of Into the Unknown. And this film takes on the issue of mental health with around paramedics specifically, because now the statistics for suicide and PTSD is almost equal to returning vets. Wow. And people don't realize that. And there isn't, well, there hasn't always been places for them to really deal with it. And so San Diego Fire Rescue Foundation, who we're partnering with on that, they are raising money to do this, to help families and to help individuals. So what the story is about, it follows five paramedic teams across the country, and they all share the story of how their job took them down and close to suicide. Oh my gosh. And, and the resilience that they had to come back. And one paramedic says, I'm a better provider today because of what I went through. Because I understand when I show up on someone's worst day, I can be there for them in a way that I wasn't before. Wow. So it is a really emotional story and you also get to see really what they face. 
when I watch the trailer, you're right, it's gripping. I mean, it's there's so much emotion in there. And then I want to talk about a few other things. So focus on impact education program, right? That's yes. huge that you're doing that this year. Yes. So this year, you know, we've expanded the program. So now we have put together a whole film library. So the Focus program takes short films out to high schools along with a full curriculum. And this allows students, really our next generation, to understand what's going on in the world and to understand the complexity around these issues. So now teachers countywide can access these at any time. So we are, but we are now in the Monarch schools. Oh, wow. We're now in the foster youth schools. And we're now in the classrooms inside the juvenile detention center. And so this year we expanded it to art students. We opened it up and said, you can take on any social topic and, and represent it through art. And so we, we called it down to the top 10 and we were, we were stunned at the topics that they took on. I mean, border, immigration, environmental, but they took on things like autism. They took on things like loss of cultural identity through neighborhood gentrification. Did you know what that word <laughs> meant in ninth no. grade? Because I didn't know what that word meant. Well, and the student art competition, right? Because yeah. we saw one of the winners at the Film Insider series, Jazz Soto, and yeah. her work was amazing. She took on body dysmorphia, the idea that social media is putting so much pressure on women that they can't see actually what they look like in the mirror because they're so critical of it. And she took that topic on. So at Night of the Stars Tribute, that's where we're gonna have the exhibit. We're gonna exhibit oh. all 10 finalists and then we will acknowledge all of them and the, as well as uh, Jazz who, who won for her, her piece. Will we be able to buy the shirts too? So yes, it will be on all of our merchandise. Oh, I love that, perfect, it's so great. Well, I always love having you here. So tell everybody again, the dates are October 16th to the 20th. Yes. You guys, you can get your passes now. Everything is on sale. You can do VIP pass all five days. You can do pass packages. You can do tickets to individual events and the culinary event we love. That's one yes. of our favorites too. Yeah, that's a good one. That's on Sunday, that's right? That's on Sunday. We always sell out of that one. It's so good, you guys. And we'll have everything on the website. Well, thank you so much for being here. Aww, thanks, Cindy. For more information on the San Diego International Film Festival, head over to sdfilmfest.com. Don't touch that remote because when we come back, we talk with the Glam Witch. My name is Windus Fernandez Brinkord with Trilogy Financial Services. I'm the Managing Vice President of Trilogy here in the San Diego region. So what we offer here at Trilogy Financial Services is full-scale, comprehensive financial planning. Anything from helping you take a baby step to starting a retirement plan or to understanding how to take income from all of your investments. If you're a small business owner and you're trying to understand what it is you need to do or what plan is best for your company, we can help you with that as well. So what a client can expect when they come to see us is us really getting to understand what makes them tick. If I try to tell a client their number one goal is retirement planning when actually their number one goal is to buy a house, we're not gonna have a successful relationship. So what a client's going to expect is for us to understand who they are and help them reach their success. So here at Trilogy Financial Services, our goal is to help you wherever you're at in your financial plan. So if it's getting started in your first career, understanding what to save into what bucket, we can do that. We don't believe in having asset minimums. So then our objective is to help you grow and build your wealth if you've had an inheritance, if you're looking to sell a business, we can help you manage money regardless of the size of that asset. That's why we have a team. A lot of people feel anxiety regarding financial planning. Our objective is to help take the anxiety out of it because we feel like when we can empower you to understand what your options are and how to get started, that we can help you sleep better at night. At Trilogy, ultimately, we work with clients in three channels. Our goal is to help clients. So we have clients who come to us just for asset management, and we can do that without a financial planning fee. Then we have clients who come to us to understand how to get organized, where, where is their money going? We try to make sure that we're helping you achieve the financial plan you want, and we have a channel to work with you in whatever capacity is best for you. My goal is to be a resource for you. Please feel free to reach out anytime. Welcome back to The Pulse. I'm your host, Cindy Matalucci. Michael Herkes makes magic across the windy city of Chicago as a genderqueer author, astrologer, tarot reader, intuitive stylist, and glamour witch. With over 20 years of experience, Michael began his journey in the world of magic and witchcraft back in 2001. 
Focusing primarily on glamour magic, he is known as the Glam Witch and centers his magical teachings on the power of aesthetic and adornment to enhance one's energy and presence. We talk all things glamour magic and I get a magical makeover. Check this out. I'm so excited today. We have an incredibly exciting guest with us, Michael Herkes, also known as the Glam Witch. He's a witch and author and an expert in glamour magic. He's here to talk about his latest book, Glam Astrology, Discover Your Signature Style with Astrology. And he's even going to give me a magical makeover. I cannot wait. So welcome to the show, Michael. Thank you so much for having me. We cannot wait. I know we've been talking about this for a while. We have. We have. <laughs> and he's all the way from Chicago just to grace us with his presence today. Yes, I flew my broomstick here and everything. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. Okay, so let's start with witchcraft and glamour okay. magic. So can you talk to the audience a little bit and tell us how you got into witchcraft and what exactly glamour magic is? Sure. So I was really drawn to witchcraft in the glamorization of witches in Hollywood during the 90s. So shows like Charmed and Buffy, um, they were really like gateways to everything. And what I found is that witchcraft is uh, a very empowering practice for me. Um, it's an empowering spiritual path. And it's really helped me kind of come into who I am. Uh, witchcraft is all about energy and setting intentions and manifesting. And uh, glamour magic specifically is a certain niche within witchcraft that focuses on personal appearance, um, beauty, fashion, uh, and really kind of hyping up your magnetic attraction to the world. I love that. So it's more than just makeup and fashion. It's more energy based. Correct. Absolutely. So uh, it, it's really about aligning different beauty tools with also setting our intentions, dressing for success, whether it is something that you wanted to pull into your life like love or if you wanted to bring in money or something to help with your career, uh, witchcraft or glamour magic, I'm sorry, can uh, definitely help with that. I love that so much. And I love that you're a devoted follower of Aphrodite and Lilith yes. and your spiritual practice is deeply rooted, rooted in goddess energy and empowerment through the divine feminine. Yes, absolutely. So I've been practicing uh, as a devotee of Lilith for a very long time, as well as working with Aphrodite now, who is the goddess of love and beauty and all of the aesthetic in the world. So um, I always see that as another focal point um, to kind of tap into that energy. We all need the goddess energy and the power in our life. So I love this. Everything that you do is so fascinating. So your new book, Glamstrology, which we have here today, mm -hmm. it combines glamour magic with astrology. So will you tell us how they work together? Absolutely. So glamour, if we kind of look at it, just the definition itself, it was originally considered to be a witch's spell. Um, that was the first definition back in the 1700s. And uh, a lot of that was aligned to the word grammar because a lot of the books at that time were based on astrological practices. So there is that kind of connection there. Um, but then just like everything, we think, you know, so many people focus on their sun signs, such as like our horoscopes that are in the back of magazines. Um, but there's so many, you know, different other like placements and planets that are in alignment to things. That's your natal chart. It's a snapshot of where all of the planets and stars were at the time of your birth. So it's not just a, about dressing for your sun sign, right? There's more to it. Absolutely. Your sun sign is one component to your natal chart. And for Glamstrology, it really is kind of focusing on the personality of your style. But we also want to focus on your Venus sign, which of course is the, the planet of love and beauty, uh, as well as your Neptune, which is all about imagination and inspiration, as well as your first house or ascendant, which is how you feel comfortable, your second house, which rules over your values and resources, and your 10th house, which is your public appearance. Oh my gosh, there's so much into it. Yes. All right, so you mentioned that you're going to give me a glam astrology inspired makeover today. Yes. So I can't wait to see what we have in store. Exactly. All right, yeah. should we do it? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Let's do it. So Michael, I'm so excited about this transformation. Where do we start? So let's start with your sun sign, which is Gemini. So Gemini is a very communicative sign and it's all like chatty and very loud and bold. So it's going to really, really kind of lean into more like bright colors such as yellow, like we have here, as well as like more maximalistic types of fabrics and prints. Ooh, I don't have a lot of yellow, so I think I need more yellow in my closet. Yes, absolutely. It's a power color, especially if you wear it on Wednesdays, because Wednesday is ruled by Mercury, which is the planet that rules over Gemini. Wow, and textures I can see. I mean, I obviously have a lot of texture absolutely. and maximalist in my closet. Totally. 
So what kind of colors are we talking about? So um, for Gemini specifically, we're going to, again, focus a lot more on like yellows. We can also focus on like silvers or really, really colorful, bright pieces such as this one here. This is great because, again, it needs to have that like attention drawing, that pulling in, that chatty communicativeness. And that sequence, I think, is perfect for it as well. Sequence is a really powerful fabric because it not only kind of attracts and pulls people's attention in, but it's also little like reflective surfaces that push negative energy away. Oh my gosh. I love that. And you know, I love a good sparkle. I actually had a closet. Um, one of my friends come and do a closet detox and they said I was either Liberace or a pirate in my oh past God. life <laughs> because of the amount of sequence. So I think you're, I think you're spot on with yes, this. Yes. <laughs> sequence is ever, my closet too. Um, but I will also say that you know, for Gemini's, they rule over the hands. So any okay. kind of accessory that is is going to kind of focus on like rings or bracelets or any kind of thing like that. This will be wonderful pieces that you can kind of incorporate into your glam astrology. I love this. So I never really thought too much about focusing on my hands, but it kind of makes sense because I'm Italian and I, I talk with my hands a lot. Mm -hmm. So just putting these and incorporating them into my wardrobe. Yes. You also have an Aries Venus. Now, Venus, again, is the planet of beauty, and Aries is very bold. It's very red. I'm an Aries, so you can kind of see that <laughs> energy right here. So from a beauty standpoint, I would suggest that you probably stick to more like brighter, bold lipsticks, and then also kind of focusing on the eyebrows and uh, your eyes with darker makeups to help pop and pull in. Wow. So... I know. I actually brought a red. I should try this on camera because it's yes. such a power color while you're going through this. Absolutely. Now, you also have a Sagittarius Neptune. Sag is another fire sign like Aries. So it's going to kind of just kind of really accelerate that beauty sector for you. So when you really, really want to kind of get glammed up, I would say really go for it with some sparkles and maybe even some, I see you have on some right now, some like blue eyeliner mm -hmm. or something on those lines that kind of give a like adventurous type of style. I love blue, the electric blue eyeliner. I'm, Trish McAvoy makes a great one right now. Ooh. So, okay, so adventurous. I love yes. that. Now, you also have a Libra ascendant. So Libra okay. is another air sign like Gemini. So, and if we kind of think about Gemini, they're the twins. So the two kind of opposites kind of attract. And then you also have your Libra, which is all about balance. So if we're looking at leaving your outfit today and we have this kind of striking pattern that and sequence, this is a really great example of how kind of glam astrology has kind of worked for you. Um, again, we have that kind of contrasting of the black and the white, which adds those two components to things. Um, we see a couple other opportunities here in your closet that you brought over. Um, but Libra is also, it's a, it's another sign that's ruled by Venus in itself. So it always wants to be like really pretty and dainty. Um, so I even say for like your rings or your bracelets and things like that to focus on more like dainty, smaller pieces rather than big over exaggerated statement ones because of you have, because you have that Libra. In okay. You. So it's balanced. Yes, it's balanced. But then it's also, we have like some soft pinks and stuff like that. Very girly kind of feeling. That's that Libra energy. Now, I also noted that you have a Scorpio second house, and that is all about your values. So I'd, I'd say you probably, rather than going out and buying a bunch of like new clothes, you're going to be a little bit more sentimental to pieces that have been passed down to you and have intimacy connected to them. Oh, I love that because like my mom, I have pieces from her that I incorporate all the time. I actually have a brooch. So oh, it's fabulous. I mean, I think you could even do like maybe a brooch as a necklace or Absolutely. something. Or totally. I love that so much. Yep. And then lastly, to kind of tie it all together, you have a midheaven that is a cancer. So your midheaven, again, is your public appearance. And so being a talk show host and putting yourself out there, you would want to probably lean a little bit more into your public image sector, which with it being cancer is going to be a little bit more demure. It's oh. going to be a little bit more lighter, pastel-y, um, water cooler tones rather than the kind of more obnoxious and in your face uh, Gemini-ness that you have. But again, that's going to give you personal power. But if you want to relate to an audience more, I would definitely say focus on a little bit more of like the muted colors, which again, works really wonderfully in what you have on today. So like even like a power suit maybe or something. Oh, absolutely. A power suit. Because again, having a cancer... Um, Midheaven, your public appearance is going to really kind of focus on you being more nurturing and opening to people and having that compassion and sense of empathy with them. And so having kind of more cooler toned colors is going to help reel people in a little more. So I'm learning so much. I mean, obviously I wore this today based on what you told me. So I'm really excited about learning about my chart, learning about Glamstrology. 
but you are not done yet. We have a little mirror spell or something that we're going to do today. Yes, absolutely. So I wanted to show um, everyone a glamour spell, specifically mirrors, because mirrors just hold an abundance of energy. And it's something that we all look at on a daily basis. So many times we look at ourselves in the morning and the first thing we think about is something that we don't like. But when we do that, we put that projection back out into the universe. So this mirror spell is going to kind of help emphasize who you are and your glam astrology. So I I brought something for you to hold. I have a little piece of citrine, which is going to work really, really good for Gemini. I have a piece of garnet here, which is going to be good for my uh, Aries self. And then you can take a beauty product. So we have here, I brought um, a fragrance of mine. I know you have fragrance as well, or you could use a lipstick or any other type of uh, cosmetic. And so you'll want to have a mirror. I have my trusty little glam on the go compact here. I love that. And you want to focus on yourself. Look into your eyes and just kind of think about the person that you want to showcase to the world. And in that moment, hold on to this crystal and then you can apply whatever your beauty product is. So I'm going to use this spray. Focus on myself. And then I'm going to recite a word. So it can be anything from an affirmation or you can use a kind of really tailored rhymey spell, which is what I prefer. Okay. You'll say... Mirror, mirror in my hand, I conjure glamour and make it grand. For the good of all, but most for me, I ask for everyone to see the me I want to be. Oh, I love that. So like a mantra in the morning or something. Yes, absolutely. And then, of course, if you have a little trusty compact mirror, you can kind of stick it into your purse or in your pocket and carry it with you all day and take it out whenever you need a little boost of confidence. Or even just to reset your day. Absolutely. Right? If you're having a bad day or something, yes. just to kind of reset yourself. Absolutely. Well, and I want to say, too, I was looking at your book and I'm so excited about it. I love your tips in the books. Oh, yes. The glam witch tip, right? And you do mm-hmm. a lot of those. But one of the ones that resonated with me that I thought was great was that you talk about... um kind of picking a character from a TV show or a story. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Will you so talk about that? A lot of times glamour magic is really focused on the art of creating a persona. And one of the best tools that I teach for people is to, again, think of a character, somebody that you really kind of are inspired by, and then taking aspects of them and working it into your daily life. So maybe it's getting inspiration on how they dress. Maybe it's also how they walk or how they might talk about something. Um, and that's always, I think, always a great gateway for you to kind of start playing with these different characters and these different glamours that we wear because every day holds an opportunity for you to be another character in the movie of your life. I love that, like Carrie from Sex and the City, right? (laughs) Exactly. That's one of my glamours. I know, I know. So tell everybody, I'm so excited that you were here today. This is so fabulous. Tell everybody where they can get your book because it's out now. It is. So it's uh, available wherever books are sold. Um, You can also always go to my website, which is theglamwitch.com, and it will point you to all of the fabulous little things that I have going on right now. And follow you on Instagram. Yes. And my Instagram account. on Instagram. Yes, I have a, a weekly Tarot Tuesdays where I will flip cards for the collective and share that with the world as well. Well, um, and then I'll put on my events page as well. I'm doing a lot of different tours around uh, all around the U.S. right now. In He's fact, on the book tour. I am. And I'm going to actually be at Comic-Con New York yes. uh, later this month on October 18th with a panel of other witches talking about modern witchcraft versus what the media sees. I love that so much. Well, we just love everything about you. And we just, can't, you too. we just can't wait to follow you. And thank you so much for helping me today. Of course. For more information on Michael and how to get your hands on his book, head over to theglamwitch.com. For more of these stories, you can head over to our website, thepulsesd.com, and make sure you're following us on Instagram at thepulsesd for all the behind the scenes fun. That's going to do it for today's episode. We'll see you next time when we put our finger on the pulse of San Diego.